you name any of the real big threats that our nation faces, you are bound to find a large number of respected people who will argue that it's really no big deal. There is one exception to this, one scenario that we face as a nation that virtually every expert agrees could bring America to its knees, and it ain't global warming. The real story is this scenario is already playing out, and no one from the political realm wants to address it. Tonight, we're going to. One week ago today, the first baby boomers became eligible for early retirement under Social Security. Hang on, stay with me for just a second. Over the next 20 years, another 78 million Americans will join them. The result is that every single household in America, your home, now essentially owes our U.S. government over $400,000 each. That's just to finance those two programs. Well, you don't have $400,000 in cash sitting around? Yeah, yeah, me neither. You're not really alone. And that's the problem. Our country is technically bankrupt. Politicians try to confuse you with all these sorts of complicated numbers and formulas about our financial future. Oh, no, you don't have to worry about it. But it's very simple. The government works like your house works. Our government has promised far more money than it actually has or probably ever will have. USA Today has calculated that we would need to stash away 58 trillion, that's with a T, 58 trillion dollars right now in order to generate enough interest to pay for future obligations. You may or may not have heard that our current investments total approximately zero dollars. Because unlike Al Gore's stump speech a few years ago, there is no lockbox. There's no dollars hid away anywhere. Now, I am probably a lot like you when it comes to this stuff. I mean, it puts me to sleep like that. But what woke me up was uh, in a book that I was reading, I found something called The Menu of Delayed Pain. I want to show it to you. This basically shows the options that we have to pay for our future debts. For example, if we acted back in 2003, we could have fixed everything by raising payroll taxes by 95%. Sure, not pretty, right? But now in 2008, because of compounding interest on money we already owe, we have to raise them by 103%. And the other options you see there in the right-hand column aren't much better unless you happen to be you know, enjoying paying 74% more in federal income tax. Unfortunately, the American people never got to see those numbers because they were pulled out of the 2004 budget just a few days after then Treasury Secretary Paul O'Neill, who had ordered the analysis, was fired. And why were they pulled? To me, it's simple, it, because our leaders in both parties believe we can't handle the truth. Well, you know what? They're wrong. What we can't handle and must demand stop are the leaders who refuse to tell us the truth. So tonight, I want to introduce you to somebody who is completely different, somebody who has no political stake in this game. He is not about left or right. He is not about anything, you know, Democrat or Republican. He is about right and wrong. He is the head of the Government Accountability Office, the GAO, which makes him our nation's top accountant. And while it is very atypical for someone in his position to speak out on stuff like this, he has finally come to the place where he says enough is enough, and he is bringing his wake-up call directly to you. Treasury Secretary, I mean, you, you just hit on that point there of how engaged Treasury Secretary Geithner is in this whole process. You've said publicly that when you were in his shoes, when it came to expectations as to the debt ceiling, you would not allow for there to be any kind of question uh, as to whether or not it would have been heightened. How do you rate Geithner and his handling of this issue? Well, you know, I think each secretary needs to be judged in his own context. You know, I, I believe that administrations now for the last 30 years have made a mistake in this sense. There is now a, a set of practices that are employed that are effectively accounting engineering to extend reaching the debt ceiling. So Tim Geithner has said we're going to reach the debt ceiling on May the 18th, right. and he hopes that that the Congress will act by July. Right. You know, well, how do we get from May to July? By doing financial accounting tricks. I, I think it, it, you know, it, it, it helps 
the Congress to avoid being responsible. I think that's a really bad idea. It's a and poor political judgment. A absolutely. I wish Tim Geithner would say, when we reach the debt ceiling, we reach the debt ceiling, we're not going to do tricks down here at our end of Pennsylvania Avenue. The Congress needs to be responsible and adult and take action on the debt ceiling. And, you know, I think the people who are threatening not to pass the debt ceiling are our version of al-Qaeda terrorists. <laughs> they're, they're, really, they're really putting our whole society at risk by threatening to round up 50 percent of the members of the Congress mm -hmm. who are loony who would put our credit at risk. So Boehner not ruling out that any kind of debate over lifting the debt ceiling, wrapping that into the budget debate is seriously a threat. You think he's dangerous? I do. Because there's a chance, you know, if you just look at some of the things that people say, well, we'll still have enough money to pay the interest on our debt is beside the point. This is not about permitting spending in the future. This is permitting us to pay the bills we've already right. incurred. Well, that puts us two weeks out if we go by Geithner's schedule from, you know, hitting that debt ceiling. You're, two weeks. Right. Do you get Congress to actually do anything in two weeks' time? Well, I don't know. You know, I think we do have a broken political system, and I think it's capable of doing irresponsible things. Mm -hmm. This whole conversation is irresponsible.